Hey guys, how's it going? It's Zenful, and today I thought I would do something a little different. Um, I'm going to watch this video with you guys and kind of comment on it, uh, maybe my thought process, uh, things like that. I played this game a couple days ago and I wasn't really feeling the best, um, so I wasn't really talking much, I wasn't really giving much thought on what I was doing, uh, I was kind of just playing, and honestly about a couple rounds into the PvP rounds I realized a couple other people were running the same comp that I was or trying to because they got augments for mercenaries early as well. Um, so I was not really thinking this game was gonna go the best, so I just wasn't really talking, was just kind of focusing on what I was doing and not really saying much. So I'm gonna watch this video with you guys. I uh, might do more videos like this in the future um, instead of just posting my past live streams uh, with the video and audio from the stream. Um, so let me know what you guys think about that in the comments, uh, if you like the stream better or if you like the live commentary better. Um, and make sure to like and subscribe so you guys can get posted on videos like this in the future. Um, I started early with the Ezreal with the bow. Um, honestly, I've been running bow early way less. Um, it doesn't really seem to build into much early. and really it's just a leftover item in the mid game um so i haven't really been running that as much uh really the only thing or the main thing that i've been using it for now is giant slayer um but really i could just end up taking a sword early and if i get bows um then i won't have any left over and i can just slam the giant slayer from there because uh, it feels really bad when you get two or three bows off the jungle uh and you took a bow early because then you have three or four bows and really only a couple slam worthy items to build out of it um i don't really like building like uh runans doesn't really seem super strong on a lot of champs uh it's definitely good on a couple champs but um it, it just isn't as flexible as the sword and definitely not as flexible as the tank items like belt uh vest and honestly even glove seems pretty flexible as well uh, you can go into things for AP like uh, Jeweled Gauntlet or you could go AD items like uh, Infinity Edge, uh, Last Whisper, things like that. Um, and honestly even the Infinity Edge seems really good on some tanks and even AP characters like Lux and like Galio. Um, so it seems pretty early or pretty worth it to do that early um, rather than going for the bow. Uh, here I slammed the giant slayer. Uh, I got the bow and I got the, off the carousel and then I got the sword off the minion waves. Uh, so I thought I'd just slam it. I knew it would be a good item on Ezreal and then I would have the leftover cloak to put on Trundle for the scrap bonus. I knew I was going for mercenary this game because of the augment that I got early. Um, it's the one that gives you 1% damage for every one gold you have for all your mercenaries. Um, I knew that was really going to be really strong late and mid game uh, because I would be econing a lot from the mercenaries from winning and um, I would also be able to build a lot of damage on uh, late game champs as well. So I was looking for mercenaries here. I had the Lowey, but I hadn't hit any other mercenaries yet. So I was just kind of buying what I what I thought would be decent if I couldn't hit the mercenaries early. Um, just kind of to last me until then. I knew I wouldn't be able to make 10 here on this round um, with the champs I had on my bench and the champs that I had in on my board. Um, I wasn't willing to really sell anything on my board because it seemed pretty solid. I had good CC, I had a pretty decent front line, and Ezreal was a great damage carry early. Um, so I just kind of kept in what I had, and once I had the two wins, I knew that it was worth it to just keep pushing for champs uh, and keep in what I had. I end up being able to make 10 here, which is really nice. Uh, I've really been liking making 10 before the first carousel, 
Uh, it seems to be working out really good, especially with mercenaries. Uh, building a lot of gold early is awesome because late game you need a lot of gold to hit what you want. Uh, um, for things such as the Tom Kench and Jinx two stars as soon as you possibly can. And always trying to stay a level ahead and uh, units ahead on everyone else so that you can make sure to get the wins for the chest. The Ezreal was owning here, so I, I figured I would be fine uh, for at least a couple more rounds, especially if I hit five after the carousel. Um, so I just kind of rolled with it and it worked out. I was kind of nervous here as well because I knew I was playing with uh, one of my buddies that said he was going mercenaries as well because he got an augment for it. Um, so I knew, I knew that he was running mercenary and I think I end up scouting here and seeing that someone else is running mercenary too. Um, so this is kind of like where I started being a little bit worried about being able to hit the champs that I needed. So that's another reason why I was kind of like keeping champs that I thought maybe I would need in case I didn't hit the mercenary, but um, it ends up working out, luckily. I grabbed the glove there off the carousel because I knew I would need it later for Infinity Edge, uh, for Jinx, and Jeweled Gauntlet. Um, I can always use another glove for other things like Shroud or uh, even Last Whisper, but I, I took it there because I knew I would need two later. I had plenty enough gold here as well to level and still have 15. Um, honestly, I probably should have saved for 20 here. Um, I did put in the double allow you just in case, uh, so I could sell. I'm not, I don't remember if I do or not, but um, if I win this fight, I'm assuming that I end up uh, end up selling for 20. And having 20 at 2.5 is great. Uh, usually I try and hit at least 10 by 2.5, but having 20, you're way ahead of the game. So I didn't end up selling there. I uh, kind of wanted to keep the trundle pair uh, just in case I hit the trundle too. Uh, that would be a pretty big spike with, especially with scrap uh, because I had the cloak on him already and I already had two of them. So I, I probably decided to stay at 15 there just, just in case I hit the trundle too on the next shop. It ended up not working out, but it's okay because we were already ahead of everyone anyways. When I, this is when I scout and see that my buddy, me, and one other person is already running mercenary. And I think that, yeah, that this other person, uh, this is my buddy that had the uh, mercenary spat. And then the other guy had already hit the gangplank, uh, the misfortune, and I think he had an Alawi as well. Um, so here I'm pretty sure I said... Uh, one of us is going to end up going 8th. I, I had a feeling because all three of us were going mercenary and really for it to pop off and for you to be able to keep up with everyone, you need wins. Uh, right here I saw someone already had built the Poppy 3. Uh, this kind of had me worried a little bit. I did have a Giant Slayer, which would be nice for Poppy, um, but I was kind of worried I would lose my win streak, uh, especially once I had gotten uh, mercenaries in. Um, I'm not sure if it ends up working out or not, but we'll see. So here we get our third mercenary, and um, and we also got a tear and a belt from carousel. Uh, the belt is always good, uh, you can always go war mogs, uh, pretty much any tank item takes a belt. So since the guy did hit the poppy 3 that was also on a win streak, I decided I would level here. And I also got really lucky and hit the MF2. Um, she does a good bit of damage and a lot of AoE damage. Um, so I knew that would put me in a good spot. And my Ezreal with the Giant Slayer, I figured would already be doing enough. I did end up playing this guy, and I do beat him um, to stay on the streak, and he gets knocked off his streak. Uh, really, I was 
kind of getting nervous here uh, or a little more nervous um, because I still hadn't hit the mercenary I did have the MF2 I did have the Alawi but um, the other guy was hitting the uh, gangplanks and then my other buddy was also hitting champs that I didn't have like Quinn and uh, more Alawis. So really I shouldn't even be running the Zyra here but um, the only reason that I kept it in is because I didn't have a fourth bruiser uh, to put in for the buff and I needed some CC. Uh, my team didn't really have much CC. Uh, that's another reason right here why I take out the trundle uh, to put in the blitz because then I would have two scraps. I could put the belt on blitz crank and I would also have a little bit more CC which I knew I would need uh, for the MF to be able to do a lot of damage. This is the other guy that had uh, mercenaries and was going for the gangplank. He already had an IE on it, but luckily my CC was enough uh, to keep him held off. And the MF2 was very big here. It, she did a lot of damage. Honestly, had I not hit Jeweled Gauntlet there or IE, I probably would have ended up losing that fight. Like if I hit Shroud or... Uh, like Quicksilver or something like that. Here I see the Knife's Edge 1. Uh, I knew it would be solid, but I do have a Jinx carry later in the game um, that I'm worried about, so I don't know that I want to put her in the first two rows. Uh, dominance is pretty good, especially for mercenaries. Uh, I can go for three-star gangplank. Uh, I can start leveling quicker, things like that. But I really wasn't winning by a lot of units at this point, so I didn't think that was worth. And the weak spot is already, like, it's pretty good. But really, I didn't think that it would be enough. Uh, I already had the Giant Slayer. Um, and Jinx late doesn't really need the healing. Uh, she just goes raw damage. Um, so I decided to take the knife's edge. I also hit the Quinn there, which was big because I got finally got in uh, three mercenaries. Um, this would start to like snowball. Um, I was already winning, and with this, it just adds to the wins even more because you get more gold. Uh, you have chances at items, champions, things like that. So. I knew that it would start snowballing because my comp was already good enough. I already had the Misfortune 2, uh, the Ezreal 2 with the Giant Slayer was doing tons of damage, and my front line was pretty solid, so I had a feeling I could keep win streaking for a little bit longer. Here I was definitely thinking I needed a rod or a sword if I could. A uh, belt would also be nice for the Warmogs to make my front line even more tanky. I'm pretty sure I end up getting the belt here. I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I get the belt here uh, for the Warmogs on Blitzcrank. Uh, Warmogs is huge definitely uh, in the early to mid game. Uh, and it's very good late game as well. Uh, just for sustain and uh, a tankier front line. So usually when I'm last pick, I end up having to take a tank item because especially this early on the carousel, people are still looking for swords, rods, um, even bows and tears. I was thinking of leveling here uh, after the carousel uh, to maybe put something else in, but um, I ended up not leveling because I had hit the warmogs. I figured my front line would be even even better, even stronger, last even longer, and my Ezreal and Misfortune would be able to just put out tons of damage. Uh, even with the Last Whisperer and Giant Slayer, the MF was still doing a lot more damage than Ezreal. Um, so hitting her early was definitely nice. The 
same situation here. I, I didn't think I would need to level. I thought I would be fine. So I just kind of saved my gold and kept the econing. It probably would have been worth the level here, but uh, no one else's board was really all that strong. So I kind of figured I would still be okay throughout uh, until 4-1. If a couple things had gone wrong in this fight, I definitely could have ended up losing it. Um, I should definitely have leveled there, but I got greedy and I didn't. It ended up working out, but I probably should not have done that, to be honest. <clears throat> So here I already had two Vi's two star. Um, I knew there was a good chance I could go for Vi three. Um, she is definitely a strong champ. She hits through armor, uh, decreases armor um, for a short period of time and does a good bit of AOE damage uh, in a cone in front of her. Um, and then I hit the Zac after the uh, jungle round and I figured it was probably a good time to put in four bruisers here. Uh, the Blitzcrank is always nice for this extra CC and, uh, and the Scrap, but luckily I had the Trundle for the 4th Bruiser, so I would keep keep Scrap. Um, I, I didn't really need all that much CC because I ha already had a ton of damage, and now with 4 Bruisers, my front line was going to be very, very tanky, especially with the Gargoyles and uh, the Warmogs that I had gotten from the Carousel and the jungle. There I saw the Galio. I, I really thought about taking it and just taking out two bruisers, um, but I didn't because I knew that I wouldn't need it later. Here I finally hit the Gangplank. Um, <laughs> he's definitely one of the main uh, champions. Uh, a lot of people re-roll for him for, um, for mercenaries. So hitting him this late felt kind of bad, but the Ezreal was still carrying me damage wise and the four bruisers was plenty tanky enough. So uh, I ended up making it work even without the game playing, luckily. I knew with all my champions grouped up like this that the redemption I would get a lot of uh, value out of. Uh, so I ended up just slamming it. Um, I didn't think I would need the extra tier late. I already had two tiers. Um, I already had Warmogs that I needed the belts for. So I just slammed it just to try and get a little bit more value and keep wind streaking here. As you can see, every round I'm going above 60 gold, um, which puts me at a, in a really good spot to keep leveling. Uh, I could have kept rolling for gangplanks, but here with the giant slayer and the glove already, I knew that going for um, that going for jinx was a good idea. Um, I was already way ahead. I was on a 12 win streak, so I just thought I would keep the items on Ezreal um, and just keep pushing. This fight was extremely, extremely close. Uh, this guy was already starting to hit most of the three-star Yordles, um, so I was kind of a little bit nervous about that, uh, that I would lose my win streak and stop getting the mercenary bonus. Uh, to this point, I really hadn't got anything crazy out of the mercenary chest, but it's still big to get at least like one gold, and if you get a couple more maybe from the, uh, the gangplank, that's also huge. And I was also staying above 50 gold or at 50 gold or above um, just so that I could keep the mercenary augment bonus going. Uh, it was 1% damage for all your mercenaries um, for every one gold that you have up to 60. 
uh, so I probably should have stayed around 60 gold but it, staying at 50 I mean it's really not that that big of a difference uh, I was only uh, 8 XP off of leveling here uh, to 8 and I was already on a 13 win streak I knew I would be able to keep winning if I put in another champ my front line was beefed um, my damage was still solid with the mercenary augment and the Ezreal with the giant slayer um, so I just figured I might as well just push the level After that fight, I was really not worried at all about uh, about wind shrieking. Still, um, I, w once I hit eight, I knew I could start rolling. Uh, I could maybe start pushing towards nine. Um, really do whatever I want because I was already just so far ahead. I was on a fourteen or fifteen wind streak. Uh, I was the first to level eight by a long shot. Um, and my augments were already really good and now with this one my front line was gonna be even bigger um, even beefier so I thought I would take that one just to keep my front line ahead anytime I see a Kaiza with mutant this early um, I'm, I'm automatically pretty nervous uh, I know it gets really strong late he only had one item on it but he had a lot of health and had a lot of time to hit the Kaiza too. Um, so I was a little bit nervous of this guy. I thought maybe he could end up pushing me late game um, and giving me issues, but um, I don't think he ends up hitting the Kaiza too. I'm not positive on that, but here I was kind of a little bit nervous about keeping my win streak and um, and maybe being able to win this game. Up to this point, I had not seen a Tom Kench or a Jinx. I really needed the Tom Kench for the five mercenary here. Um, because it gives you a big buff to the drops that you get and I thought it would be pretty big to just hit nine uh, it was only five one and I was already halfway to nine um, I was getting tons of gold for wind streaking um, tons of gold from the mercenary bonus and it just kept on rolling This guy also kind of made me a little nervous because my carry was still Ezreal with a Jeweled Gauntlet and a Giant Slayer on 5-1, but my front line was just so beefed that I honestly didn't think I would really have a problem with many people. Um, I was wind streaking huge, and I just kind of wanted to save up and push the level just so I would have a higher chance at getting the Tom Kench and the Jinx. There I lost, but I was completely fine with this. I knew eventually the Ezreal would fall off. I was surprised it hadn't already, but um, luckily the MF and the Zac were doing a lot of damage and the four bruisers was super, super strong. Um, so I wasn't really taking a lot of damage even when I was losing here. Um, so it was okay, I had time. Uh, I still had 100 health on 5-1. Um, so I just kind of like wrote it out and just thought that I would wait to hit 9 and then just roll down for Jinx and Tom Kench. I lose again here, but like I said, even though I'm losing really not losing that much health I lost twice and I only lost 20 health um, that's pretty good honestly um, I'm still at 80 HP I'm 20 gold off of hitting level 9 and then I would be able to roll down after 
uh, either after the carousel or a couple, maybe a round or so after that. Now that this guy had the stacked Kaiza, uh, this is the guy that I was talking about earlier. I was getting a little bit nervous about him hitting the Kaiza too, and getting very strong after that. Uh, he he ended up putting uh, Chemtech and a uh, Gunblade on her by the time I fought him again, which I think was really the difference. Uh, he also had the Mundo too, which was way more tanky than before. Um, so yeah, he ended up beating me again there. I lost 16 health, and I knew that this was gonna be like a crucial time for me to roll, uh, hit the Jinx, and then I would still have the beefed front line and maybe hit the five mercenary as well on the roll down. So I decided there to hit nine, uh, take out the Ezreal, I got the twin shot and the uh, sister buff in, and then literally right after I hit the Tom Kench and the Yumi, so I instantly took out uh, the four brawler or four bruiser uh, with the trundle and put in the Tom Kench, and then for my ninth champ, I put in the Yumi. I thought Yumi would be really good here just for a little bit of support. Uh, usually, like at this point, if you have this four bruiser uh, and five mercenary in you're in a pretty good spot but it's also super late in the game people have three stars people have stacked carries um, so I still ended up losing here uh, this guy had hit all of the yordles and he finally had got in the Vigar it wasn't really that bad of a loss um, I still had a ton of gold so I wasn't really that worried but I knew it was time to start doing something or else I was gonna be taking a lot a lot of damage I couldn't really decide if this was a good play or not. Um, I did have a Zach already on my uh, on my shop, so I ended up selling him, getting the items off, and putting him on Tom Kench. And then I started feeding him uh, champs just so that he would start to get stronger. Here I probably should have bought the Zac. I'm not really sure why I didn't, to be honest. Um, but I just wanted the Oriana in, um, just so I could get a little extra shielding on the Jinx and the front line, uh, just so they would last a little bit longer for me. Once you hit the five mercenary, you start getting some crazy, crazy stuff. I got two three costs and 10 gold off that uh, chest, just for winning. Uh, th this starts putting me way ahead of everyone else. I was already 9 before ever anyone else was. Um, I was already in a good spot, but hitting the 5 mercenary was actually insane. Uh, it just puts you so far ahead with rolling. Uh, you can literally roll for any 3 cost or 3 star that you want. I hit the 3 star Jinx. Um, I still had like 60, 70 gold left whenever I hit the Jinx 2 star. Uh, so I thought I would just keep rolling a little bit, maybe try and hit the Yumi 2 or uh, Zach 2 again or uh, the Tom Kench. I did end up putting um, another Bruiser in for the four br to keep the 4 Bruiser buff. Um, I decided the, the Oriana wasn't really that necessary. Um, I already like have a ton of front line, I don't really need much more shield and hitting the two star jinx really just like 
kind of made my decision easier uh, because she pumps out a ton of damage and really like there's not many comps that can keep her from ulting once at least before she dies if she's two star so I figured I would be fine here I hit the Yumi too which is is really like just makes things a lot easier um, she's a really good support um, so it kind of made things a little bit easier then I hit two Yumi 2's in the same shop uh, that was kind of a bait honestly I could have saved some gold without buying that um, but I ended up selling it I think soon after anyways so it wasn't really that big of a deal but honestly getting Yumi 3 I'm, I would rather just get the Jinx 3 or uh, the Gangplank or the Vi 3 so I probably shouldn't even have bought those to begin with um, or just ended up selling them but I think I sell them here pretty quick, but I probably shouldn't have bought that anyways. I needed to hit the Tom Kench too very badly and then either hit the 3 star Vi or 3 star Gangplank and swap items to him. My front line was starting to get shredded, uh, people were starting to get a lot of AP built up um, and get some 5 cost carries, so I was definitely in a pinch here at 39 health and my comp really doesn't go too far from here uh, outside of hitting the three star Vi or the three star um, or the two star Tom Kench. I ended up selling out of the Vi there just because I would rather use the gold to either roll for Yumi 3 or Jinx 3. Um, Vi is still pretty good but I had all my tank items on Tom Kench already and four bruisers in so I honestly thought it would be not pointless but it definitely would not have been as good as the Yumi 3 or the Jinx 3. After this fight I just I hit all the 2 star 5 costs and I really just thought it was over right here. This guy's comp was really strong with the Galio 2 and the Jace 2 with really, really good items. Um, he also had a couple spats that were really nice. So we had a lot of synergies um, and a very beefy front line and a lot of damage. So I thought I was kind of over here. It would probably be like a second or third maybe if I got lucky. Um, but I still kind of like kept with it I knew I already had two Jinx I had two Yumi's so there was a chance there's always still a chance that I can get the three star so I just keep rolling all my gold just to try and see if I can hit the Jinx uh, I knew pretty much there's no way like I was either gonna die if I only had this comp my comp was pretty much capped I probably could have taken out two of the bruisers and put something else in like uh, maybe Oriana and Janna um, and I might have been a little better off but um, to be honest I just kind of wanted to go for the Jinx 3 especially after I saw this one in the shop uh, I would have already had six Jinx and I was pretty confident that I wouldn't get one shot even if I lost here um, I would still have at least one life left. To be honest, the Yumi ult really saved me here. Uh, literally hit every champion on my team and his team. Um, so it stunned and healed my whole team and stunned his whole team. Um, so that really kind of like kept me alive there and was super lucky that I knocked him out. So it was already a top three. Getting all this gold here was very, very nice. If I would've got an item, uh, I probably wouldn't have been in as good of a spot. Maybe if I would've got a Nikos, I would've still been fine, but uh, having all that gold, I knew like I would have a good chance of hitting another Jinx, um, if not all the Jinx I needed, or close. So I end up hitting one. Um, <laughs> I just put the rod on the Trundle because of Scrap. 
uh, and I didn't really have anyone else that I necessarily needed it on um, so I just put it on him just for the full item This was another one of the guys that I thought would be a problem earlier uh, because he hit the early Jace and he already had the first aid augment, which increases your healing and shields by like 30% or 35%, I think. Um, I thought I was dead there and luckily I wasn't. I lived with literally two health. Uh, if I hadn't have killed one more unit, I would have been dead there with uh, six Jinx on the bench and one on the shop. I get a trap claw here from the scuttle really it isn't that it isn't really that good for me here because I have the exile augment uh, which gives me extra shield at the beginning of combat um, if my units are spread so getting the trap call was not really the best um, I don't remember what champ I put it on here but really all I was worried about here I asked my buddy that I was playing with I said um, if I don't hit the Jinx 3 off the gold, do I just sell all my board until I hit it? And he was saying that he thought it was worth, because even if I didn't hit it, um, that I would still probably lose anyways. So I just did it, I just full sent, because I thought the same was true. He didn't think I would win if I put it in, um, if I had just the Jinx 3 and like a few other champs, but I knew I had... I'd seen the power of the Jinx 3, um, and I knew that if I got it, it was wraps. The game was over. I had the Giant Slayer, I had the Jeweled Gauntlet. I was literally one-shotting the entire team. It didn't matter. And there, as you can see, it did exactly what I said. It literally one-shot the whole team. Uh, it did 58,000 damage uh, with literally one smash. It killed at least four or five units. Um, I knew here the game was over, like there was literally no way that other guy's comp could beat me. Um, there was no way that um, that he was hitting a 3 star 5 cost and the Jinx just does too much damage, it just didn't matter. And like I said before, if I didn't hit the Jinx 3 I was dead anyway, so I thought selling my whole board would be worth. Uh, because really all I would have needed was the Jinx 3, and even if I didn't win with it, it would still be cool to just say that I had a Jinx 3, um, so I just kind of went for it, especially being at 2 health, like, it's kind of a no-brainer, and for some reason, this guy clumped all of his champs, I don't think it really would have mattered, but she ended up doing 79,000 damage there in the last fight, um, I was super excited and super mind blown that I even hit the Jinx 3 or had enough gold but honestly the win streak at the beginning of the game kind of like put me over the edge um so that's kind of what pushed me towards going for the Jinx 3 and ended up hitting it um like I said at the beginning of the video if you guys like the video make sure to like and subscribe uh I'll be posting way more TFT videos I'll have a lot of different stuff coming so uh, make sure to do that so that you can get updated um, and comment on the video if you guys like this style rather than just playing the stream audio and the stream video. Um, I kind of like doing this uh, just to give more of an insight on what I was doing. Um, I'm still kind of trying to get better at talking uh, for the whole video. Um, so this is kind of why I wanted to do something like this just to kind of get me in the habit of talking the whole time and just kind of giving you guys like an idea of what I was thinking and like um, what I'm trying to do during the game rather than just being mostly silent and just saying a few things here and there um, but that's it for me guys uh, thanks for watching peace